Welcome to the chemisode on solubility curves. This is for unit two of VCE chemistry, and we're going to introduce you to some information about solubility curves. So let's go straight and have a look at what we need to learn, or what we need to know, to do this stuff. Here is your prior knowledge. Um, basically, you need to understand what ionic compound formulas are. So you need to be able to write down the formula for different ionic compounds. That comes from unit one, um, the, the lesson in unit one about ionic compounds. You should have a basic idea of how to calculate the mole and you should have a good idea about doing your mass and volume conversion. So going between grams, kilograms, milligrams and milliliters, liters and, and stuff like that. So you need to be able to convert between mass units and volume units. Uh, key words you're going to need to know, um, or you're not going to need to know, you're going to learn um, throughout this this lesson is solubility curve. We're going to learn what they actually are. We're going to learn five different types of solutions. We're going to learn what a saturated solution is, an unsaturated solution is, a supersaturated solution is, understand what concentrated and dilute solutions are as well. We're going to need to use the word crystallization or recrystallization and what an exothermic reaction actually is. So these are the key words that you're going to need to use in sentences after you've finished listening and watching this video. Let's go straight into the idea of solubility curves and um, how changes in something can change solubility. Basically we have a few different types of solutions we can have. We can have saturated solutions and we can have concentrated solutions. We can have unsaturated solutions, we can have dilute solutions. Here is a basically a slide that uses these words in, in definitions for how you can describe what they actually are. Concentration is a measure of how much solute is dissolved in the solvent. So your solute is your solid. For instance, if you have a salt water solution, your solute in that case is the salt, the sodium chloride. And it's dissolved in a solvent, which is normally a liquid. Okay, um, The majority of things that we deal with um, in chemistry are water solutions. So our solvent in the majority of cases is water because things are going to be dissolved in water. So your solvent is mainly going to be water. A concentrated solution has lots of solute dissolved whereas a dilute solution has not much stuff dissolved. And that's basically common sense. You understand what concentration means. You understand if it's concentrated there's lots of stuff in there. If it's dilute there's not a lot of stuff in there. And you know that from just making cordial yourself. So um, that's what those two words about. What other things you might not know about are things like a saturated solution. Now what you're going to do is if you have a, uh, an amount of water and you start putting salt into that water, you're going to get to a point where you can't dissolve any more salt. And what that is known is as a saturation level or the point where the solution becomes saturated with salt. This is a point where you cannot dissolve any more solute in that amount of water. It's very temperature dependent because if I change the temperature, I can increase the amount of stuff I can dissolve. So a saturated solution is at the point where you can't dissolve any more solute at a certain temperature. If a solution can still dissolve stuff, it's known as unsaturated. So um, you can get those two different points there where unsaturated, you can still put stuff in, but saturated, that's it. That's, that's as much as you can have. A supersaturated solution is an unstable solution that contains more solute than theoretically possible. So, for instance, if I have a solution at um, 30 degrees, I make it saturated. If I increase the temperature, what I can do is I can normally dissolve more solute. So increasing the temperature increases the amount of solute I can dissolve. If I then cool it down, what happens is technically it should all crystallize out, but doesn't that always happen? What it does is it becomes a supersaturated solution. These are made by cooling a saturated solution. So if you have a saturated solution, you cool it down, it becomes what's known as supersaturated, which is an unstable solution that contains more solute than theoretically possible. Um, supersaturated solutions will be talked about in the next video as well. So this one's mainly about solubility curves. We're going to give you a heads up on supersaturated solution just so you can have an idea of what's they are, and we'll show you how you can actually use super saturated solutions in your everyday life or where you might find them. So let's go into looking at solubility curves. A solubility curve is um, something that looks like this, where it shows you 
the change in solubility at different temperatures. The idea, the fundamental idea of a solubility curve is that the solubility of substances or solids increases when you increase the temperature, okay? Or the solubility of gases will decrease when you increase the temperature. So um, change in the temperature changes the solubility. And what a solubility curve shows you is the maximum amount of solution or solute that can be dissolved at a certain temperature. In general, they're measured here in um, grams per 100 grams. So your y-axis there is the solubility in grams per 100 grams of water. This is also known as grams per 100 mil of water as well. So solubility, 1 mil equals 1 gram, so therefore grams per 100 mil. And your x-axis is your temperature. So you're going to change your temperature. You're going to, in general, increase all these um, solubilities. Uh, what you might want to do is quickly on the notes, if you have the notes there, is draw a line that goes down, so one that um, decreases with increasing temperature, and they're gases. So all these that we have at the moment are increasing with increasing temperature. Um, so they're all solids. If you have a gas, it will decrease when you increase the temperature. Now, important thing about solubility curves is when you're doing work with solubility, you really need to include your units with your working out. Um, it helps a lot when you're doing dealing with solubilities. What I'm going to do now is I've got a couple of questions here. I've got three questions here, and I'm going to just stop this video part of it, and I'm going to start recording myself answering these questions using this solubility curve that I have here. So um, if you want, grab a pen and you can um, follow along with me doing these questions. calculations. So using solubility curves to do a few calculations which are obviously at the bottom of the sheet here. Let's have a look at them and let's see what we're going to do. Remember um, in the, the keynote video I said that the important thing is to remember to write your units when you're doing these types of calculations. So let's have a look at the first one. First thing is calculate the maximum amount of silver nitrate that can be dissolved in 250 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius. So silver nitrate, obviously you need to know is AgNO3. Let's go have a look at that. AgNO3 is here. It's this line here. So this is a, the maximum solubility at different temperatures for silver nitrate. Um, we want 10 degrees. So we're going to go up to, for, there's 10 degrees. We go up here and then across here and work out that the maximum solubility is... 160 grams per 100 grams. Okay. Oops. Excuse me. Um, so if we go down here, I'll write it's 160 grams per 100 grams. Now, that means in 100 grams we can dissolve 160 grams of silver nitrate. However, we have 250 grams of silver nitrate. Okay. Sorry, we have 250 grams of water. How much can dissolve in 250 grams of water? Well, it's two and a half times the amount that we have here. So if I do that times 2.5, I'll work out that it's going to be 400 grams in 250 mil, okay, or 250 grams, because this is per 100 grams. To get it up to per 250 mil, we times it by whatever we need to do to this. Let's go have a look at the next one. When 100 ml of saturated solution of potassium nitrate is cooled from 70 degrees to 10 degrees, what mass of solid will crystallize? Let's go have a look at that. We've got potassium nitrate, obviously not nitrated, potassium nitrate, KNO3. We've got two temperatures. So 70 degrees, we'll work out how much is going to be dissolved, and 10 degrees, how much is going to be dissolved. So let's have a look at this. Potassium nitrate is this line here. So 70 degrees, we've got um, go up to potassium nitrate and go across. We've got pretty much 140 grams per 100 grams. So 140 grams per 100 grams. Okay, and then at 10 degrees, what do we have? We've got um, going down to 10 and potassium nitrate is here. We've got 
about 22, um, 22 grams per 100 grams. Notice it's just a little bit above this little line here. So if you go across and make it a little bit above, above that line. So what's the difference between these two? Okay, what's going to happen? Obviously we've got 100 mils, so per 100 mils, that's fine. So in 100 mils, we're going to have at 70 degrees, 140 grams dissolved. When it cools down to this much, we're only going to have 22 grams dissolved. So what's going to crystallize out? Well, it's going to be about 118 grams is going to crystallize out. Okay, because that's the difference between what's there at 70 degrees and what's there at um, 10 degrees. Next question. What temperature is needed to dissolve 0.5 kilograms of sugar in a standard cup of water, which is 250 mils? So, what's interesting, we've got um, a concentration already. We want to know when this is going to be saturated. Because this is grams per 100 grams, I need to convert this into grams per 100 grams. At the moment, it's 500 grams, which is half a kilo, per 250 mil, 250 grams. Okay, so what is this on this scale? So what is this per 100 grams? Well, we divide by 250 to go from 250 down to, um, we divide by 2.5 to go down to 100 grams. So that means if I just do um, 500 divided by 2.5, we'll realize that it's 200 grams per 100 grams is this amount of sugar in water. So if we go and look up where 200 grams is, well, 200 grams is here. We go across to where sucrose is, which is pretty much sugar, and take that down to our x-axis, it's going to be about 22 degrees Celsius is the temperature needed to dissolve that much sugar in that much water. So half a kilo of sugar in um, a quarter of a cup, sorry, a quarter of a litre or one cup will be around about room temperature, tw 22 degrees, close to room temperature anyway. That's how you use these solubility curves. You basically always write down what unit of solubility you're dealing with, okay? And then you can convert it as you will. I'll let you have a go at the last four here um, and just see what you get. Obviously, it's a bit of thinking required in these questions. You can't just um, basically plug in numbers. You do have to think about what the question is asking you. You do have to think about how you can move between these, um, these units. But I think it's pretty self-explanatory as long as you know um, you write down your units. That's the important part of it. All right, and that's it for this video.